Hi Year 11, so today's revision video is going to be about the fear and terror that the Nazi party inflicted on the people of Germany. So for your examination, it is important that you can identify and explain the four different methods that were used by the Nazi party in controlling and establishing fear amongst the people of Germany. So method number one that was used is concentration camps. Now concentration camps were actually first set up in 1933 first concentration camp being Dachau. Now concentration camps were places that people were sent to to be corrected, where they would go there to work and obviously the working conditions were atrocious and there was mass levels of hunger, starvation, diseases and broke out on a mass scale and there were high numbers of deaths. In the original early days of concentration camps in 1933, it was political enemies that were sent there, for example after the Reichstag fire, um, many communists were sent there and of course that other people were sent there as well. Um, anybody who spoke out against Hitler could be sent there, Jewish people, ethnic minorities, um, Polish people for example. So concentration camps were used for a wide range of people um, living in Nazi, Nazi Germany, not just Jewish people as most people assume. So that's method number one for concentration camps. The second thing that the Nazi party used was the SS. So the SS, they were nicknamed the Black Shirters, they were Hitler's personal bodyguard. They were a large organisation that worked fiercely closely with Hitler. They were extremely loyal to him. They were also very athletic, they were tall, they were muscly and they were intimidating. And Hitler's personal bodyguard, the SS, would accompany him to meetings, to rallies, and they would use bullying um, and scare tactics to keep the people of Germany under submission and, and under Hitler's control. The third method that we'll talk about now is the Gestapo. So the Gestapo, otherwise known as the secret police, was perhaps one of the most feared me fearful methods of Hitler and the Nazi party. The Gestapo, the secret police, and they would look like just normal people and sometimes you would have people working in their day job, for example a teacher, and then their second job would be an inform as working as an informer for the Gestapo, that's what they were called, they were known as informers. And their pure, their pure and simple, the job that they were designed to do was to spy, to listen out for conversations, to check what were people talking about amongst themselves. Were they criticising Hitler? Were they saying bad things about him? What was the support like for Adolf Hitler? And anything negative or any challenge to Hitler's leadership that was picked up on, the informants would go to the Gestapo headquarters and report any negative or anything that was suspicious and that would challenge or threaten Hitler's leadership. The Gestapo were known for being um, brutal. Their methods, not only would they search and question people, it would go much further than that. They would torture people, they would carry out beatings as well. And the famous story being, of course, Hans and Sophie Scholl at a university in Munich. They were reported by the caretaker of the university as they were caught handing out anti-Hitler, anti-Nazi propaganda leaflets. The caretaker reported Hans and Sophie to the Gestapo headquarters where they were arrested, tortured. Sophie was tortured so badly her leg was broken. And as a result, um, after they're tortured, they still wouldn't have confess to their crime, their only crime being that they handed out a leaflet and they were both executed. So needless to say the Gestapo, a very fearful organisation and the scary thing about the Gestapo was you didn't know who was working for them, they would just look like a normal, your everyday average Joe person. So very difficult to actually work out who was working for the Gestapo. And last of all, <clears throat> the last method that was used was the normal police force and the law courts. So that aside from the Gestapo and Hitler's private bodyguard, the SS, you had the normal regular police force and you had the law courts as well. The ordinary police force just carried on with their normal day-to-day -day duty and work that they did in Germany, just a normal police officer role, but they ignored most of the crimes that were committed by the Nazi party, especially some of the more violent crimes that were committed, for example, Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass where 91 Jewish people died that night, and beatings, torturings, generally these crimes were ignored by the police force. All the jobs, um, especially higher up in the police force, um, and the law courts as well, judges, were usually taken up by members of the Nazi party. So needless to say, the court of law, the judges that worked in these courts of law, people that held higher positions in the regular police force were dominated by members of the Nazi party. Again, showing that 
this loyalty and commitment was always being you know, led back to Hitler. Hitler had his hand in lots of different pots essentially. He had control over the law courts because he had people working in positions in the law courts who were members of his political party and same as the police. And again, it's just a great example of how Hitler was very clever in ensuring he had control and complete power over every aspect of society because ultimately if you have people working for you under your political party you do you're able to influence your power and control over them so that's the four methods of terror and the fear that Adolf Hitler used and the Nazi party used over the people of Germany thank you